Assalamu alaikum and I am so tired. <laughs> Last ishtama and khudam and I really feel like an ansar today. So we are at the country market and you might be familiar with that. That is where for Jalsa um, we park and you could never imagine how big this place is because we have set up the khudam ishtama here and there's several thousand khudam will be coming here over the weekend. So I'm just going to go through what happened um, throughout the day today. So every ishtama it starts with the words of Hazur, and that is broadcast um, via MTA. You watch Hazur's khutbah Juma, and the khudam come here and they watch Hazur. After the Friday sermon, we then moved on to the opening session, and the opening session was the keynote address was by Amir Saab UK. And Amir Saab covered a whole range of points, which I think, as if you're a parent, you should watch. If you're a kid, you should watch. And there was points about social media, uh, about the dangers confronting our youth today, and also obviously the positive aspects of social media. I'm just going to show a short extract of Amir Saab's speech here. The fundamental purpose of holding these ishtamas is to bring all of the Khudam and Nepal together so that they can have a spiritual experience and in this country in particular you are very very fortunate that you have Qazak Yultul Masih residing in this country so the spiritual experience that you will gain during this Ishtama is going to be far superior than anything else that any of your contemporaries around the world experience. Then moving on, after the opening session, there is so much happening at Ishtama now, that it's not just one thing. So basically the Ishtama split up into various themes. So there was a sports session which happened, academics, and also there were some talks which went on. One of the talks that were delivered was a very, very heart-touching um, speech by the son of Dr. Abdus Salam Saab. So Dr. Abdus Salam was the first Nobel laureate in MDM Muslim Kunti. In fact, one of the first, if not the first, Muslim scientist to win a Nobel Prize. And the story about Jodhi Saab uh, in particular is quite poignant because they first met in 1946 when my father got off the boat. Uh, I think it was called the Lusitania, the boat that came from Mumbai to Liverpool when he was coming to Cambridge. And the first person that he saw was uh, uh, Jodhisar. Because Jodhisar was coincidentally there to pick up his nephew. And my grandfather had written to Jodhisar saying that my son is coming to Cambridge. Would you try and keep an eye on him and stay in touch with him? So Jodhisar, when he saw my father come down the gangplank, pulling this big trunk behind him, went over to help my father carry the trunk. And because my father was totally unprepared for the English winter, he took off his own overcoat and gave it to my father to help him uh, against the cold. Okay, now the academics. So academics today, um, a bit different from previous years, um, where they had the Talawat and the Nizam uh, finals today, so all in one. Um, so it, the Talawat was, sorry, I'm going to read from my notes. I hope you don't mind. It's, I think, 12 o'clock, midnight. <laughs> it's midnight now. So. Uh, we had Abu Bakr Saab from Barking, he won first prize. Taha Daud from Jamia was second. And Adil Tayyab again from Jamia was third. So in the Nazim competition, um, Hafiz Saab from Jamia, he won. Uh, second was Khaliq Saab from Morden. Uh, and a chap called, I think these guys had doctor's handwriting. Uh, um, Amir Norman from Liverpool, I think. Hope I've said your name right. He was third. Also happening was some very interesting uh, speeches, um, and the speeches will go on into the finals tomorrow. And also a presentation competition. And actually, this is right at the end of the day, and I didn't realize how awesome this is. Some of these presentations were actually really, really good. Uh, I mean, the winner was Jamia, and that was just like the footage and video footage they had was absolutely mind-blowing. So the results for that, Masrul, region third, second, Mukami, and first were Jamia. Right, going on to the sports. So a rainy day, so a bit difficult for the sports to go ahead as normal. Um, we had football, cricket, volleyball, 
Um, in the football, we had Hearts. Uh, two matches were played out. Hearts won four against Middlesex B, uh, who had two. And Masu region two and Bashi region uh, nil. So Masu region and Middlesex B um, first uh, teams into the next round. Um, in the volleyball, we had the Canada Jamia team, who hopefully we'll show you a bit of tomorrow. Um, they were versus Beth and Noor. And from all accounts, Canada Jamia looking like one of the teams to beat in the volleyball. Um, it was 25-17 to Canada Jamia. The cricket scores. Uh, so again, I think due to the weather, very challenging today. Um, uh, we had we had a couple of fixtures. So four fixtures were played uh, in the cricket. Uh, Masu region beat Batu Subhan. Batu Noor beat South region. Thai region beat Islamabad, and Batu Fatu beat Bashi region. So Masu, Batu Noor, and Thai, Thai region and Batu Fatu all through to the next round. The highlight of the day was Hazrat Amir Al-Mu'minin Ayyadullah Ta'ala Ibn Israel Aziz arriving on site to read the Maghrib and Isha prayers. Right, so end of the day, today we had a very beautiful moment actually. Um, this is difficult to convey actually on camera. Um, and this was, we had Munir al-Dasab, who has been fortunate to be very close to Khilafat, very close to Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Rabe, uh, and also Hazrat Amin al-Mu'mineen Ayyadullah Ta'ala ibn Israel Laziz. And he gave some of his very heart-touching accounts of Khilafat. And I'm just going to leave you uh, with uh, the uh, with some of the with one of the accounts that Mani Dasab gave, and inshallah um, our team will be back tomorrow to bring you more news from the Ishtama here at Country Market. So have a good sleep, those of you at Ishtama, and the rest of you see you tomorrow. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. It reminds me of another story where we traveled to. Burkina Faso. I don't know if you can show what Burkina Faso is. Dory. Somebody there. Um, it's kind of the beginning, just the beginning of the Sahara Desert. Huzur had traveled already to Dory and we are on the way back to uh, one of the main cities. I forgot the name. Um, but where's Wagadougou anyway? And on the way back, we were traveling, MTA car was at the front, then had a, a, a Kafla car, then Huzur's car, then another car at the end. So we traveled at a small distances because the, the, the road was not, was un, you know, it's, it's quite, you know, it's a catchy side, it, was, it wasn't tarmac. So we had to travel for hours on that. So we had to leave distances so that uh, the drivers behind you can see and doesn't crash into you. And you couldn't brake suddenly either. But after a while, the, 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 guy, the driver who was driving our car, he said, I don't think the rest of the cars are following us. And it's one road, so you can't go anywhere. So that was a bit worrying. So I told him if you are able to stop somewhere, to stop on the side without, you know, off the road. And normally we're told, we're told not to stop. There are um, robbers on the street, there are on, on the, in these areas, and you can't stop. There's no, hardly any police in, in it's, it's a barren land. So uh, he stops after about five minutes, the whole kind of the cloud of dust settles. We look behind, there is nobody. So I told him, okay, let's turn around and see what happened. So when we turned, we drove about 10, 15 minutes. And then all you could see in the horizon is just one car. And that's, that was even more worrying. And there was supposed to be three. We drove slightly closer and I realized that, like the first thing is that you need know, to know that Hazur you know, is safe, alhamdulillah. So when, when we got closer, I, I saw that it was Hazur's car. So that kind of sent a bit of peace. So, but then where, where are the other two? We got about 15 meters close by and I told the guys, my colleagues, just stay in the car, let me get, get out and see what's going on. 
and there's nobody outside. I couldn't see anything around. And when I looked inside, the passengers were inside, and Huzul was inside with the Begum Sahaba also. And I believe Huzul was praying. I stood there, I didn't go any further. Then Huzul went out of the car, he was the only one to get out of the car, and then he looked at me with a smile, I could see the smile, and I, I was bewildered, and Huzul was smiling, there are no two cars, and and he pointed me, and I, I came nearer, and he, then he smiled at me, he says, come and have a look, quite in a relaxed mood, come and have a look at what these guys have done, so to speak. I, I didn't understand what he was talking about, and he looked down off the road, and there was like a big ditch, and over Rizul's shoulders, I'm looking down, I saw a smashed up jeep, one of the jeeps is smashed, kind of, the roof is flat, it's... Huzul smiling, there's a smashed car in, in the ditch. The other one, I don't know where, it, where, where, where it's gone. And I said, Huzul, shall I go down and find out? Help, but help them. He goes, no, don't worry, they'll come out. And I'm looking down, it's like, there is no, there's no sign of a living thing. And I was just standing there. And literally, yeah, it's minutes, it's not, it's not like a short, it, it, we waited and we're looking down. It's like, and I'm looking, what happened? I could see the, 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 um, the tracks of the car falling down and then it was said to me, it, it seems that he fell, he seems like he fell, fell asleep or something like this. But I think, you know, there's so many things going in my mind. I mean, how does he know that they will come out? For a human being witnessing what's there, they, they could be all finished. And it was a full car, like six people. So I stand there and just patient dreams who said, you know, they'll come out. And after about four to five minutes, you hear some noise. And then the first person gets out. I mean, no broken limbs. I mean, he hasn't gone down. There's no sign. The first person gets out of the car. The second person comes out. And yeah, they have to walk by the bed to come out. It's not somebody, you know. It's... And they all, six people, get out of that car and come in front of Huzul, and I'm looking at them. There is not even a scar on their faces. There is, there is... How did he know? And, and this is the tawakkul that Khalifa al-Masih has. The first thing is, it was a prayer. There's nothing there to help you. There is no ambulance. There is, there is no people to help you. There is, there is nothing. Because they'll, they'll come out. And they all came out, one by one. And that's... It's, it's, if it wasn't a peace or a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't know what it can be.